Good morning. Welcome again. Uh, my name is Austin, and I get to serve as the associate pastor here, and I uh, just love getting to be part of this church. So thanks for letting me be part of your church. Um, it's a blast. Hey, uh, as we jump in this morning, um, we're going to do just a little, like, a little, like, listening prayer, a little quiet moment before God. And uh, last month, I, when I preached, we started the service with this. And so if uh, you were here last time, you're like, oh, yeah, we did this last time. But if uh, this is new to you, um, just bear with me. It's a little awkward um, in, in this space, but it's, it's worth it. And um, I believe that as we prepare our hearts, as we quiet ourselves before God, um, we're actually positioned and postured um, intentionally as a way to receive more of what God has for us. So can we do that? Um, So here's some things I want you to um, think about. We are trying to quiet our minds, trying to quiet our bodies, and trying to prepare our hearts. And um, I'm a super distracted person um, because um, just of how my brain works. So, um, you know, I can can hang with the most distracted people in the room. I'm I'm with you. I get it. Um, However, uh, here's some things you can do. You can close your eyes. Um, If you are are a fidgety person, like do some deep breathing. And like if you want to open your hands um, and have this posture of of quiet, this posture of rest, but also this posture of receiving. Um, If you want to kneel, you can kneel. We're just going to take a a couple short minutes, um, and we're going to just lean in and ask God what he has for us. Okay, so go ahead and close your eyes. Everybody take a deep breath. God, would you soften our hearts? Would you examine our hearts? Quiet our minds, all the distractions. God, we need you. Speak to us. Amen. Amen. So I believe as we, anytime we come before God, anytime we open up his word, we just pause, take a breath, and before you download content, before you unpack what God is maybe going to show you through a resource or through someone talking, just first say, like, God, I'm with you. What do you have for me? And it, I believe that his church, us, we are growing in our ability, our ability to listen to our, to listen to our God, his, his quiet but firm voice in these places. Um, and I, typically it's not as much a corporate practice, um, but I believe that God is both speaking to us individually today and um, corporately. So thanks for being willing to do that. Uh, This last few weeks, we have been in a sermon series called Stay, and it's really this idea of hanging on to Jesus, uh, abiding in him, um, staying connected to him, hanging on to who he is, hanging on to our faith, um, and in just sort of the the chaos of our world, Um, and and Jacob's talked a lot about deconstructing, um, people deconstructing their faith or walking away from from God, walking away from church and sort of this practice of faith. Um, And we really want to be intentional to identify how do we, like what are the things that we can, what are the tools that we can participate in? What are the ways we can experience God so that we can hang on? 
so we can stay connected, so that we can abide in Christ. And in the midst of our suffering, our sickness, our grief, disappointment, it can be easy to lose sight of God's goodness, right? In light of all the craziness of the world around us, it can be easy to lose sight of how sovereign God is. I want to read to you Hebrews 12, starting in verse 1. It says, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has, set, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Fix your eyes on Jesus, right? How do we not lose our way? How do we not grow weary How do we stay connected to who our God is? It's right here. Fix your eyes on Jesus. And at first service, I I shared this, but as we were worshiping, Zach was over here, and his uh, daughter came up, sweet little Cammie, and she was wearing this red sparkly dress, just like a little princess, and she's holding her dad's hand, and it was such a beautiful picture of how Jesus never lets go of us, right? Like the father, like God's connectivity with his kids. And she, they're just holding hands and they're just worshiping together. And it just is this promise that in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the suffering, in the midst of whatever we're experiencing, and some of us are experiencing a lot, he will never let go. He will never forsake us, Right? So what we're talking about, these these practices, these experiences of of how we lean into God, there there is this equipping. These are tools that we're talking about. But at the end of the day, we're good with Jesus because he will never change. He is always faithful. He is always going to hang on. These tools, they just help us recognize him. They help us see him and connect with him in a greater way. So the last few weeks, we've been talking about things like worship and prayer, um, getting in your word. uh, Last week, Max talked about uh, the Holy Spirit and just God's presence in our lives. These are tools and blessings from God so that we can practically hang on to him. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is it is about Jesus, right? One of the ways that we can stay connected with God is by experiencing godly community. God made us for community. First, he made us to be in community with him, right? To be unified with God. And then we see in in his word that he has made us to be unified with other believers, Now, Paul in Corinthians, I'm going to read out of 1 Corinthians, he describes the church as a body with many parts. And it's this beautiful picture of the church. I want to to read it to you. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 12, it says, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of the same spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. So he's pointing out all these different components, but they're also all connected, right? Like God has made us all very unique, very different, um, and we need, the, we need that diversity, and we also need to be unified under Christ. In verse 18, it says, as, as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. 
And jumping to verse 25, it says, There may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. The bottom line is we are made for community. We are the body of Christ. We are made to be doing life with other people, to be in community with God, to be completely dependent on God, and then in, to be in community with others, to be interdependent on one another. If you don't have a friend who loves Jesus, you're in trouble. Seriously. Like, if there isn't someone in your life who is running after God, is desperate for God, is pointing to him, is in their word, and is talking to you about their relationship with Jesus, it's going to be really hard to stay. Because God has actually built us to be dependent on each other, to work together, to be faith builders for each other. I have a men's group. We meet every other Thursday morning, and this week we're talking about Sort of like, why do you follow Jesus? So not just your conversion story, but like, why are you still doing it? Like, why is it that important to you? And then the second part of our conversation was, how do you do it? Like, how do you hang on to Jesus in the midst of all of this? Um, And everybody who shared shared something different, but there was a component of community in every person's answer. Like, they either found God because of someone or because someone, someone told them about Jesus, or because they got to see the testimony of Jesus in someone's life, and then they're hanging on to God because they have community who's helping them, right? Like, they're able to hang on to God because there's people in their corner saying, you can do this. We need each other. Now, this picture of, this, be- this beautiful picture of the body of Christ um, is it's kind of, like, ideal. Like, we don't We don't actually see that functioning fully yet, right? Like our church, as amazing as as it is, it's imperfect, right? Because it's full of people. Messy, broken, imperfect people who are trying to stay connected to Jesus, who are trying to abide in Jesus, who are trying to follow Jesus, but it's going to be messy, and as Jake has been talking about this, this idea of deconstruction, people kind of unpacking um, their faith and then not pressing into Jesus but walking away from Jesus, um, one of the top three reasons um, people deconstruct their faith is church hurt. Now, I know there's people in here who've experienced church hurt, right? Maybe you've experienced it here. Maybe you've experienced it elsewhere. And that's real because people are broken. People are messy and they're going to make messes. I wish that I could promise that in this church there won't ever be church hurt again. I wish I could promise that. But we can't. But what we can promise, what I will promise, is that I am desperate for Jesus. And I am desperate to see his church be healthier. I am desperate to see people who are following Jesus continue to surrender the things that maybe don't matter as much to be unified in the gospel of Jesus. Because that's what matters the most, right? In a healthy community, in a healthy body, each part of the body has a job. Right? So as we consider what it means to be part of community, as we consider what it means to be part of a local church, it isn't about being a consumer. It isn't about just whether you like it or you don't like it, but it actually requires something of the body. Right? So like if your foot is numb and like not working, it's kind of hard for the rest of the body to function. 
in the same way that we see this analogy with people is each of us, like each of us are super important to this working, to this functioning. And not just in this local church, but the body of Christ collectively. Like I texted one of my fellow body of Christ people this morning and said, I need prayer. And they don't go to this church because not everyone goes here. But they're part of the body of Christ. And I am so grateful that I have people who are in my life, who are in my corner, who are saying true things, who are reminding me of what God says about me, who are, who are reminding me of who Jesus is in my life. We need each other. Our uh, mission at Yakima Four Square Church, you see it, uh, Usually it was during worship, right? That big circle that says, uh, love God, love people, and serve the world. The bottom line is, it starts with Jesus. It starts with this experience or this encounter we have with God, right? Loving God, responding to what Jesus did. But that second part, this loving people component, like we didn't make this up. This is out of the Bible, right? Um, We are not only called to be lovers of people, to be in community, but it also is this amazing thing that happens is we're actually encouraged and challenged in our own walk with God, in our own journey. It helps us stay. And as we experience God's love, as we are in healthy community, a natural byproduct is serving the world, serving people. When Jesus impacts our lives, we respond and we start to look a little bit more like Jesus. To stay connected to Jesus, to abide in him, we need community. But we also need to lean in to what it means to be part of the body of Christ. It might look like serving. It might look like giving. It might look like functioning in your spiritual gifts in a greater way. It might look like teaching, but there has to be a response. Jesus is, the, through the word of God, we see again and again and again this invitation of saying, like, don't just sit back, but lean in. And it's for the function of the local church, but it is also for you, so that you can remember that you are part of the kingdom that you are part of kingdom building. If you have a hammer in your hand, it's a lot easier to remember that there's something being built. It's a lot easier to remember that there's something that's bigger than you, that God is doing, and that you get to be part of. It's grounding. It's faith building. When I hear the testimony of the guys in my life group when they're talking about what God is doing in their life, like, it's totally different than how I experience God. And so there's this thing that happens in me, and I'm like, whoa. Like, I mean, I, I believed that God could do that, or believed that he would show up in that way, but now I'm experiencing it firsthand. It's faith building. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, right, we will overcome. We need each other. So I'm going to invite our worship team back out, um, and our ushers um, are going to help us with some communion. But we're kind of as we conclude our service this morning, we're going to go into communion. And we do this once a month. And it's easy when you do a a liturgy thing like this um, for it to feel religious. It just is like you go through the motions. Here's the supplies. You do the thing try and talk to Jesus about it and try for it to be intentional. Um, and my, my prayer this morning is that we would take our time here um, and that we would do it a little bit differently to kind of help us shift our thinking and not just think about like, oh, this is what we do, we're at church, um, but really encounter God in a unique way. I want to talk a little bit about like why we do communion and what it is. We see communion through the word of God, um, in, starting in the Old Testament in Passover, where God delivers the Israelite people from slavery, from bondage, right? And he saves 
the Israelites from that, from, and they, he frees them, but this Passover moment is where he saves them from death. And they, they paint over their doorposts the, a blood, the blood of a lamb who is sacrificed. And because of that blood over their doorposts, they experience life, not death, in their homes. So then we translate to the early church. We translate to Jesus communicating and celebrating Passover with his followers. But he's, he's also adding to it. And he's saying, hey, I'm actually this perfect lamb. So what we see in the Old Testament was just for the Israelites. But now my blood will be shed. And it is a gift for you. And actually it's a gift for everyone. Not just for Israel anymore. But it's my body will be broken. My blood will be shed for all people to experience life, not death. And I love... Paul talks a little bit about this practice of communion because he's a, he's a leader of, of the early church. And he does a lot of housekeeping. And he actually says, before you take communion, you actually have to like go ask for forgiveness to the person you just offended or the person you've been offending. He, he does some like practical community building, actually, right? So like in order for us to make our hearts right and to be in community with God, we might have to deal with some community issues. And so I want to ask you right now, um, if there's unforgiveness you're harboring, if there's, you don't have to raise your hand, but if there's um, hurt church hurt, resentments, maybe unforgiveness to self, right? These are things that as we lean into God and specifically in this practice of communion, we have to deal with because it's worth it. Luke 22 19 says, And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. I like in Matthew's translation, it says, Drink of it, all of you. (laughs) Not just for the elite. Not just for the people who have it together. It's literally for all us messy people. For this is my blood, the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So in just a moment, I'll have you guys um, stand up. We have the buckets up here with the little communion supplies in them. Um, and the reason they're up here and the reason you didn't get them when you walked in is because we're talking about this practice of hanging on to Jesus this practice of leaning in and abiding in him and it's a small thing the distance you know from the back of the auditorium to the front of the auditorium is not that far but I don't want people to do this passively I want to be a really specific decision I'm agreeing with what Jesus did on the cross, his death, his resurrection. I'm claiming his blood over my life, that I would experience new life, that I, was, that I would experience freedom, right? Remembering that his body was broken for me. So we'll have it up here. Um, one more thing I want you guys just to think about while you're doing this, you can do it independently. You can do it with people sitting around you. Um, But as we remember in God's word, it says every time you do this, you remember what Christ did. But I think we're also remembering not just what he did biblically, not just what he did historically, but what he did in me, right? Like what he has walked you through. 
the bondage that he has brought you out of, right? The old ways of thinking that he has saved you from hell, that he has, the, he has and is redeeming your life. And as we identify, as we speak in our inside of our heads the testimony of Jesus in our life, it like reminds us of how good he is, how present he is, how powerful he is. It's faith building, okay? So go ahead and stand up, take your time, walk up here, grab some communion supplies. Our worship team is going to lead us in a song.
God, we thank you. so awesome but because you are you are faithful you never change you are powerful you are sovereign you are good you are gentle thank you God for who you are as we were singing about that new life this part of the words in this song. Um, I just want to ask, like, is there anyone in here who's saying, I don't have new life yet? You can sit or stand, whatever you guys want to do, but I, someone who, who would say, you know, like, we're singing about that, but I, don't, I haven't experienced new life yet. Maybe you've never said yes to Jesus. Maybe you've never acknowledged him as your savior, as your king in your life, and you want to do that today. You want to say yes to Jesus. Um, We do this every week, but we just want to make sure that if there's someone who's ready to say yes to following Jesus, that we just give an opportunity. So just raise your hand simply, and we just want to pray with you. If you want new life right now in Christ. see that hand. Okay. So Jesus, we just want to celebrate with the one who raised their hand. All of us, we can just um, pray in agreement. Um, But anytime we say yes to Jesus, whether it's for the first time or whether it's for the thousandth time, he has already said yes to us. So God, we just um, thank you for someone making a decision to say yes to you today. God, we acknowledge that we are desperate for you, that we are sinners who are only saved by grace, whose lives are made new because of your work on the cross, because of your resurrection. God, in that every day we're dependent on you. God, would you do a mighty work in that one? Thank you, God, for your salvation. And for the rest of us, um, I know that this is simple, but if you're saying, hey, I want to lean into Jesus, I don't want to just hang on for dear life, but I, I want to continue leaning in. I am leaning in. I want to abide in Christ. I want to stay connected to Jesus. And, and maybe you're practicing some of these spiritual disciplines, but just like in your heart, in your mind, you're saying yes to that. Yes to leaning in more. Yes to being connected to my Jesus. Um, we just raise your hand. Like, I am leaning in. Yeah, I'm leaning in. And the beautiful promise is that Jesus already said yes, right? He's already faithful. So God, we just um, thank you so much that you equip us, that you give us resources to stay. God, and for all the people who just said, I'm leaning in, God, would you give them practical pictures and resources and steps to know what that looks like to lean in. I was just reminded um, somebody who gets prophetic pictures earlier in the service um, shared um, a, a picture of someone who whose life is in pieces and the word they used was shambles and their life is in all these broken little pieces And I I believe I'm summarizing, but the word was Jesus' hand is here. And he's like saying, hey, I got you. Give me all of your broken little pieces. And I will rebuild your life. I will redeem your life. It 
literally doesn't matter how messed up or how broken or how far we are. Jesus is not done. He makes all things new. Amen? Amen. All right. Hey, before you guys leave today, um, a couple things as you exit this place. We have our prayer team who's already up here. Thank you, guys. Um, If you're saying, hey, I'm leaning in, I need some support, um, they would love to pray for you. Um, They're awesome. Also, uh, next week is our 55 North uh, Flourishing in the Third Third of Life um, event at 530. So if you're looking forward to that and want to register for that, please do that today. Let us know you're coming. Um, and then if I hope, I'm hoping there's still burritos left in the foyer. Um, we are selling burritos for our Mexico mission trip. Um, and so even if you're not going on the trip, but you want to say, hey, I want to, I want to contribute. I want to be part of that. Um, you can also enjoy a delicious breakfast burrito um, and help support um, the mission of God um, in Mexico. Cool. All right. Bless you guys.